Hello everyone. Welcome to part two of our APA workshop at the Harold L. Germer Library. In this video, we will go over the format of in-text citations, which are included in the body of our paper along with our direct quotations and paraphrased material. To review, in part one, we learned how to properly incorporate information into our papers using direct quote and paraphrase, otherwise known as indirect quotation. In the top example, we've included a direct quotation where part of our text was taken word for word from the original source. That text is surrounded by quotation marks to show our reader that these words are not our own. In the bottom example, we paraphrase the ideas of the same passage, putting what we've learned into our own words. Both direct quotes and paraphrase require in-text citations here enclosed in parentheses at the ends of the sentences. This shows the reader where the information originally came from. Whether using direct quotes or paraphrase, in-text citations give credit to the original authors as the source of the information. In this workshop, we will explain what information belongs in an APA formatted in-text citation. As you might notice here, the direct quote and paraphrase have slightly different in-text citations despite stating the same information from the same source. As in part one, we've changed the color of the in-text citations to make them stand out on the screen. You should not follow this format in your own papers. The basic format for APA in-text citations is author last name, comma, year. Since the majority of your paper should be in your own words, that is paraphrased, this is the format you should be using most often. When you are using direct quotations, that is copying a bit of text word for word from the original source, you also need to include the page number. The in-text citation format for direct quotes is author last name, comma, year, comma, P period, and the page number. Leave a space between the P period and the page number. This in-text citation format is called a parenthetical citation as the information is enclosed in the parentheses. We will talk about narrative citations a little later, which is another good way of including citation information in our papers. You will often find authors have stated similar things and want to show that your statements are well supported. You can cite more than a single source in one in-text citation. To do so, separate them with a semicolon. List the sources alphabetically within the citation. Of course, most researchers in the social sciences don't work alone, so there will often be additional authors. When your source has two authors, include both authors in the citation and separate them with an ampersand as you see in the example on the screen. Author last name, ampersand, second author last name, comma, year. Do not type A-N-D. That is not proper APA format. Once there are more than two authors, list only the first author listed on the source, along with et al. That is E-T space A-L period, comma, and the year. Et al. is an abbreviation of et alia, which is Latin for and others. Et and is not an abbreviation and is not followed by a period. Al is shortened from alia and is followed by a period and then the comma and year. For direct quotes, you will also be adding information about the page numbers. As mentioned earlier, parenthetical citation refers to including all the in-text citation information within the parentheses. In our top example, for our paraphrase passage, we have two authors, and our in-text citation is Fontana, Ampersand, Montalbano, comma, 2008. No page numbers are required, as we did not incorporate a direct quote. Another in-text citation method is using the narrative format. This relies on a signal phrase that introduces the author 
and for APA is always followed by the year of the source in parentheses. In our bottom example, we have the same passage, but using a narrative citation, we started with Fontana and Montalbano, 2008, note that. Because our author names are part of the sentence, we do not use the ampersand to link them. When using narrative citation with direct quotes, include the information for the page number or equivalent part within parentheses where you would find a parenthetical citation. In this example, we've added it right after the end of the direct quote, although we could have also added it at the end of the sentence. The signal phrase incorporates authors as they would appear in the parenthetical citation. Therefore, if we had three or more authors, we would list only the first author's last name, followed by et al. period, and then the year of the source in parentheses. Do not list out additional authors. APA format encourages using narrative citation and signal phrases as it helps the writer avoid what it calls over-citation, or the need to seemingly include the same citation on sentence after sentence. In the passage here, we've started off with our narrative citation, Berniker and Kramer, 2020. For the next sentence, we began with the signal phrase, their study explained. Their study refers back to the source in the previous sentence, Berniker and Kramer. We do not need to add an in-text citation to this sentence, as our signal phrase is enough to tell our reader that we are referring to the same source. Although if we were incorporating a direct quote, we would need to include the page number as seen in previous examples. If we had not begun with their study and had only written students who were designated at falling under the limited willpower theory and so on, our reader would not know where that information had come from and could not assume it was from the source previously cited. The words their study at the beginning helps clarify our source and improves the flow of the text. Using signal phrases is effective when discussing a single source at length in your paper. Once another source is introduced, you will need to include a full in-text citation again. If your professor only allows the use of scholarly journal articles for your assignment, the information presented up to this point is probably enough for you to create in-text citations in APA format, as journal articles have a standard format. For other sources, the basic author, year, page format might not work. We will spend the remainder of the presentation discussing how to properly cite sources with missing elements and other non-text formats. Remember, APA format only requires page numbers when using direct quotes. Of course, not all sources will have page numbers. APA format requires you to provide some information about where in the source the direct quote was located. For sources like web pages, which have no page numbers, provide the paragraph number the quote appears in. Using the abbreviation PARA, P-A-R-A, period, instead of the P period in front of page numbers. If your source is divided up with clear sections, you can list part of the section name along with the word section in lowercase and count from there. In this example, we're citing from the first paragraph from the section titled the core quality of D in the dark triad from our article. The in-text citation format is author last name, comma, year, comma, the section name capitalized along with the word section, which is not capitalized, comma, para for paragraph, period, space, and then the paragraph number. Here we used the name core quality for our section and noted our quote was taken from the first paragraph. No other sections of this article have core quality in their title. 
If they did, we would need to change the section name as it would be unclear where our quote came from. Along with page and paragraph numbers, parts like table, slide, graph, chart, figure are all acceptable sections to use in in-text citations, along with timestamps when quoting dialogue from audio or video. You may be citing information from a chart, graph, or table, copying it into your paper or presentation. Use the label name from the source in place of the page number for the in-text citation, capitalizing the name of the source type. In the example on the screen, we are citing Figure 1. On the References page, cite the resource you found it in, even if you've only used information from the table or graph in your paper. Remember, this is only necessary for the equivalent of direct quotes, meaning copying exactly from the original, either reproducing the image in your paper or presentation, or copying statistics or other data from a table or chart. Citing sources on presentations, whether for school or work, is good scholarly practice. The act of creating citations for an image on a slide can help remind you to incorporate informative visuals instead of merely decorative ones. You may come across sources where you may not have all the information the basic APA citation requires. For the following examples, remember that when using direct quotes, you will also need to include information about page numbers or equivalent source sections, as discussed previously. If you cannot locate a date for your source, use N period D period for no date, with no faces in lowercase. For articles with no author, use part of the title in quotation marks. Use only as much of the title as you need so that it cannot be confused with anything else on the references page. Note that the comma before the year goes inside the quotation marks around the article title. For books with no author, use the full book title. To improve readability when citing group authors, Spell out the complete name of the organization in the first citation, followed by an appropriate abbreviation in square brackets. After the first citation, use only the abbreviation. In this example, we are citing the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and added CDC in square brackets at the end of the first citation. From the second citation on, we will only need to use CDC in our in-text citation. Be mindful to use the proper name of the organization. Here it is not the Center for Disease Control, but Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. On occasion, you might want to reference passages that were reprinted in your source. For the in-text citation, you will cite both the original source using the information provided along with the secondary source, the source you have read it in. The format is cited author's last name, comma, year, comma, as cited in secondary source author, comma, secondary source year. Within our article by Charles Manias is reprinted a long passage by the geologist Charles Lyell from an 1883 illustrated London News article. When using a direct quote from Lyell, we first cite him as the original author, followed by Manias as our secondary source. Lyell, comma, 1883, comma, as cited in Manias, comma, 2016, comma, P period, space, 23. We write, 
as cited in, as we are taking it on good faith that this passage was copied correctly from the original into the secondary source. The APA encourages tracking down and reading the original as good scholarly practice, but acknowledges that this can be difficult to do. Personal communication is any material that your reader does not have access to, such as unrecorded lectures, live interviews and conversations, along with private letters, text messages, photos, and other resources. No matter what form the information exchange took, all these sources are cited as personal communication in the in-text citation. The format is first initial, period, and last name of the communicator, comma, personal communication in lowercase, comma, and the exact date, the month spelled out in full, day, comma, year the exchange took place. Since this information is not in a retrievable format, it will not appear on the references page, only in the in-text citation. Included under personal communication might be material found in your course shell if you are preparing a paper or presentation for those not enrolled in your class, for example, for the Beacon Conference. But when working on a paper for the course the material is posted in, use the appropriate citation format discussed earlier for the source type, such as for PowerPoint slides, as your professor and classmates do have access to that material. Sources that are accessible, such as personal letters found in archives or reprinted online, along with screenshots of perhaps once private chats or text messages, are not considered personal communication once they are made available to a wider audience. Again, use the relevant citation format depending on how the source was made available. When conducting interviews for your own research, either as part of an assignment or a larger project, APA requires you to obtain consent before including participants' information in your paper. You may need to use aliases such as participant 2 or a biology major and obscure other details to protect the privacy of your subjects. See the publication manual of the APA section 8.36 for more information on the ethical use of personal information. In this video, we have discussed the basic APA format for in-text citations for both direct quotation and paraphrase. In addition, we've looked at how to correctly cite sources that may have missing elements or are not text materials. By using narrative citations and signal phrases, we see how we can avoid over-citation and write more coherently. In-text citations do not provide enough information for the reader to locate the original source. They are mini-citations that we use to locate the source on our references page, which will include all the information about our cited materials. This will be the subject of Part 3 of our APA workshop. For additional APA citation help, visit the Harold L. Drimmer Library website at library.sunywcc.edu or go to the APA Style blog at apastyle.apa.org. If you have questions about anything covered in this video, please visit us at answers.sunywcc.edu to get help from me and the other librarians or to browse the library FAQs for additional help. You can also call or text us when the library is open. This is the end of part two of the APA workshop.